Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's Gabriel, just another fan TV. Back at you another video. Like the content in this video. Go ahead, smash that like button. Like the content in this channel. Go ahead, hit subscribe, man. I like hearing about the Ravens, uh, NFL talk. Definitely hit that subscribe button. The season is right upon us. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Sunday morning. Uh, just Sunday in, in general. Beautiful day today, right? So the Ravens won versus the Commanders last night, 17 to 15. So we got to talk about the game, uh, recap the game, stand up performance, things like that. But before we get into that, Let's talk about two guys that was, that didn't play that was interesting. All right, now, Tyler Wallace didn't play. Apparently, he's still injured. Um, even though, you know, he really only got very limited stats in the preseason, he's going to make the team. I just, you know, I wish we could have saw something to make me feel better about that, but he's going to make the team. I don't feel bad about it. Uh, I just wanted to see a little bit more from Tyler Wallace, right? But, you know, he's a good, talented young player. Hopefully, he can turn it around in the regular season when given the opportunity, but he's, he's probably going to make the roster. Um, second guy, Ben Powers, did not play, did not suit up, which either means one of two things. He's being traded, which I doubt, and or he's the Ravens starting left guard. So shout out to Ben Powers. He was literally the third option, um, I think, from everybody. If you had to say who's going to win the left guard spot, you know, it was oh, it was either about Tyree Phillips or Ben Cleveland. And then here comes Ben Powers out of nowhere. So shout out to him. Hard work this summer. He put it in. He's probably the starting left guard. So shout out to Ben Powers for that. All right, now let's get into the game. Let's get into the stand-up performance. You know where we got to start, right? The new sign of Demarcus Robinson uh, went crazy last night. Four catches, 135 yards, one touchdown, six targets. Really should have had two touchdowns. Didn't drag his foot um, for that little count, that, that little fade ball that Anthony Brown threw him. Really should have been a second touchdown right there. So I like to see him get that left foot down, drag that right foot, fall down with the catch. But that's a that's a ticky tack thing because he showed out two big plays, 67 yard catch uh, for the touchdown on a beautiful double move, uh, nice sluggo route. Then he does another he does an out and up another double move, and I believe that was like a 50 yard game. So Demarcus Robinson showed out in this first game. Uh, now listen, I'm not going to hype it too much, right? These he was going against Commanders players that might not make the team or might be guys. Might, might, might be third string guys, right? But for a veteran like Demarcus Robinson, he should dominate that competition. He should. And that's what he did. So, you know, it, you can see it both ways, right? I'm going to take it from the angle that he should dominate that competition, and that's exactly what he did. So shout out to Demarcus Robinson. Um, I like what I saw, right? Um, so the Ravens have, you know, four receivers that's for sure going to contribute in some form or fashion this season. And I hopefully those guys can step up enough to where, you know, we'll be okay. All right, Demarcus Robinson showed well in his first game as a Raven. Just need that to continue. Okay, second stand-up performer. We got to talk about the young quarterback, Anthony Brown. Anthony Brown has gotten better each and every game. I remember doing early training camp, early OTA notes, and Anthony Brown was throwing interceptions every practice. Damn near. Multiple interceptions every practice, right? Um, he said in a post his his uh, post game interview that that the Ravens practice so hard that the games become easy, and you can see that it looks like when he's standing back there, it's easy to him. Now, one thing that I need for Anthony Brown to do is get with a QB coach, please. His mechanics are not good. I'm I'm just gonna be honest. He he the wind up when he throws it looks like Byron Leftwich, and sometimes he doesn't really step into the throw. He has such a good arm. That some of his throws are just all arm, no 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 feet involved. Kind of like how Lamar Jackson was when he first came to the league. He had such a good arm that all his throws were just arm, and he had to, and he as he progressed, he learned to step into his throws and things like that. So Anthony Brown has a lot of raw potential, a lot of raw talent, and what I like from him is two things. One, he he actually throws the ball to the wide receivers quite a, quite a bit. You know, I think I only really saw him target the Titans a couple times. Now, obviously, he's not playing with guys like Isaiah Likely and Mark Andrews. So, if he, those guys were in the game, he probably would target them. Um, but I only saw Josh Oliver maybe get one or two catches from Anthony Brown. And um, the wide receivers ate when he was in the game. I mean, we just got to be honest. Even so, compared to like a Tyler Huntley, who was a good quarterback, solid backup, probably could be a starter um, on some teams, probably should be a starter on some teams. Tyler Huntley is really safe. Those are tight ends, things like that. Now, safe is not always bad. I'm not saying safe is, is bad. Safe can win you games. 
um, sorry, safe can, safe can keep you from losing games, but it might not always win you games. You know, that guy, that makes sense for you guys. But I like what I saw from Anthony Brown. 15 for 19, 256 yards, one touchdown, 17.1 yards per completion. And like I said, he gets better. He got better each and every game. Tennessee game was cool. I like what I saw in the Cardinals game. And then this was by far his best game versus the Commanders. So shout out to Anthony Brown. If the Ravens put him on the practice squad, he probably won't be a Raven. Somebody's going to take him, I, I would assume. Um, so shout out to Anthony Brown. Another guy, Christian Welch. Now we're on the defense side, so two standoffs from defense. Christian Welch. This was a guy who, videos early this week, I was saying, hey, he's cut. He's, he's, he's done for. And he still may be cut, but he didn't go down without a fight. He showed out in his last game. He had a hell of a last game. Nine tackles, four solos, one tackle for loss, two and a half sacks. He was all over the field. He looked like a guy, I'm playing for my job. I want to be here. I want to be a Raven. Or, or I want to be on the NFL team in general because he's still putting out that tape for other teams to see. Uh, I liked what I saw from Christian Welch. He was all over the field. Now, in my opinion, it may be too little too late just because the Raiders are probably only going to carry four guys who can play true inside linebacker. And, you know, you already got Bonds and Queen. Malik Harrison is pretty much locked up. That's three, so it's one spot. And I think that could be Josh Ross. All right. But Christian Welch didn't go down without a fight. He had a hell of a game. So shout out to Christian Welch. Um, the last one, I'm, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to cheat a little bit. You know, my video, I make the rules, right? <laughs> so I got the three safeties on here. Um, Tony Jefferson, uh, Darius Washington, Geno Stone. I thought all three guys had really good games. Tony Jefferson, my biggest issue with Tony Jefferson this preseason was his tackling was piss poor. And we got to be honest about it. We love, we love Tony Jefferson. He's a great locker room guy, things like that. I did not like what he was doing with, with his tackling this preseason. But this game versus the Commanders, wrapping up, taking dudes to the ground, he was flying around the football. He also looked like, he also looked like a guy that said, hey, look, I'm a veteran. I'm playing in the third preseason game deep into the second half. Oh, yeah, I, I'm on the line here. So I like what I saw from Tony Jefferson. Geno Stone. Six tackles, three solos, um, a near interception, and a half a sack at the end of the game. Geno Stone, he's one of my personal favorites. I'm, I'm not going to lie. You know, I talk about Geno Stone a lot. But I just think that the Ravens don't have too many guys that can play traditional deep free safety. I just I don't think they have too many guys. I really think it's just Marcus Williams and Geno Stone. That's it. Kyle Hamilton is a hybrid of all kinds of different positions. But just to put him back there in the free safety, I don't think that's the best way to use Kyle Hamilton. I, honestly, I don't. So to me, if you cut a guy like Geno Stone, you're leaving yourself with one free safety on this roster. That's just Marcus Williams. And if he goes down, we're back to where we were before. So I I need to keep Geno Stone. That's me. I need to keep Geno Stone on this roster. Um, but he had a good game. He still plays special teams. So, you know, he obviously has that kind of area um, that, that can help him out with his roster um, candidacy. I just like what I see from Geno Stone, bro. I do. I like what I see from him. Last guy, uh, Darius Washington. Six tackles, three solos, also a near interception. Probably should have caught that pick, uh, bounced through his hands. Uh, Sam Howell almost didn't see him. He comes back into the lane. It's kind of a dollar pick. So maybe, maybe it is a little difficult, especially for a defensive back. But um, And then on top of that, Darius Washington, also he gets the um, the fourth down breakup. Well, it wasn't really a breakup, but he had sticky coverage on the guy. It wasn't a well-thrown ball by Sam Howell. went out of bounds, really. But he was right there step-by-step step with the guy. Okay? So these three safeties... Um, I think only two of those guys are going to make the teams, and one of those guys is going to be out, you know, on the outside looking in. Um, but all three had a good game, bro. All three had a really, really good game. So shout out to those guys. Now, game recap. I want to talk about some things I saw in the game. All right, Josh Ross all over the field. Still, uh, I think he had something like eleven tackles, nine solo tackles, uh, something around there. He was really good again. Um. What I know about Josh Ross is when either when he knows it's a, it's a run play, he shoots the gap so fast. When when he's a design blitzer, right? It's designed for him to come up the gap. He gets through the gap like that. Now, there was some negatives to this game for Josh Ross. He missed a sack. He should have brought down Sam Howell, and he missed he missed one or two tackles. Now I remember the swing pass that the um, commander ended up scoring a touchdown onto the running back. He was out there, but he just wasn't fast enough to get to the corner to actually bring the running back down. Um, so, you know. Um, also, real quick, 
I know this is about the Ravens, but I'm going to talk about the Commanders for a quick second. Sam Howell, I don't know if we were just bad at tackling or I, I, maybe I underestimated his athleticism, but he was so elusive this game. Breaking tackles, running for yards. He ran the ball more than I thought I would ever see Sam Howell running in the NFL game. All right. Uh, and he threw the ball pretty well, too. So shout out to Sam Howell. I, I mean, just ran from the other side. I like what I saw from Sam Howell. Okay. Especially as a rookie. All right. Um, we also got to talk about Ty Linderbaum getting his first preseason action. I thought he was solid. He had a holding call. It didn't technically get called on him. It was two holding calls by the Ravens on the same play. They gave it to the other guy, which I think was Khalil McKenzie. Um, but he was solid. I'm not the greatest O-line evaluator, so don't don't come to me for that. But from what I could notice about him, I thought Ty Linderbaum was solid. Okay. Um, the defensive line. Pressure. All game. I love watching off from the defensive line, except for the final part of bringing the quarterback to the ground. So, like I said, Sam Howell was elusive. Roger Washington had a really good game. Roger Washington was a guy I was like, why is he such a lock to make the team? He showed, he showed why. He played really well. Uh, a guy like Jamario Moon, I like what I saw from him. Had a half a sack uh, in the game. I think uh, him and Christian Welch combined on a sack for, on, on Sam Howell. Jamario Moon might be a practice squad guy. See if the Ravens can keep him on there. Okay. Um... Brandon Stevens struggled a little bit. He ended up did, did getting that uh, that goal line stand. Uh, the pass deflection on that third down made him sell for a field goal. Um, now, I want to talk about the Marcus Robinson again one more time. And uh, for, for this, well, maybe, maybe two more times. But th this is for this reason right here. Because once he scored the double move touchdown, I really saw I need to see him with Marcus Robinson. Now, this is not about, oh, I was scared he was getting injured. It wasn't about that. It's about the fact that we know he's a he's a good vet. We know he's going against third string players. He should torch them. He torched them good. Get on the sideline because I wanted to see Makai Polk and Shamar Bridges, man. So Shamar Bridges gets two targets, one catch, eight yards. Makai Polk gets two targets, one catch, 10 yards. And I was just end up being disappointed the fact that these guys weren't given more of an opportunity. Now, obviously, you got to get open, right? So I'm not saying like blame Demarcus Robinson for that. No, I'm not saying that at all. You got to get open. You got to do your job. But I just feel like the Marcus Robinson on the field it limited the opportunities a little bit. That's all. So I was a little disappointed in that. Um, but you know, it is what it is. Uh Ravens signed Cameron Dicker, that that punter, just for just for this game. He showed pretty well. You know, maybe he'll get a chance to punt somewhere else. So he, he showed pretty well. So good shout out to him. Um, a guy I want to talk about, probably the most impressive receiver. Not probably. He was the most impressive receiver outside of Demarcus Robinson, and that's Benjamin Victor. Benjamin Victor is a guy that I really like. 6'4", long frame. He is a contested catch specialist. That's what he does. If you see that catch he made uh, for you know 50-yard game from Anthony Brown, to, to go back almost parallel to the ground, hands on the ball, and just have your full back just hit the ground, bounce off the ground, and, and maintain the catch, that's big time. With a defensive back right on you, that's big time, bro. I like Benjamin Victor, but due to the numbers game, I can't see him making the roster. Honestly, I can't. He's already been here a couple years. I don't know if practice squad is something that he'd be willing to do for here. Maybe somewhere he'll stick somewhere else. But for this to be the last game, I think he had four catches, 74 yards. I like what I saw from Benjamin Victor. So um, he's always been impressive to me when he's got an opportunity to play. Uh, so maybe somewhere else he'll, he'll get the opportunity. All right. Um, now, the Demarcus Robinson uh, second touchdown that should have been, if he would have dragged the switch in the touchdown, Harbaugh challenged the play. It was clearly he had one foot in, one foot in bounds. Um, I don't know why he did. I don't know what he saw or what the team team upstairs saw. I bring it, only bring this up because I feel like Harbaugh isn't that great at challenging plays. And maybe that's the whole Ravens organization because it does, takes more than one man to challenge the play. Obviously, he has to get approval from somebody up top, say, hey, look, you should look at this. But I, I don't understand why they did that. I hope that we can get some better logic going into the regular season, okay? Um, defense was really good this game. I felt like they were all over um, the commander's offensive line. But missed tackles were a thing. Missed sacks were a thing. They just got to wrap up better. It's like they get the guy, they start to pull him, and thinking it's over. But Sam Howe was elusive. He said, no, it's not over. I'm going to dip outside his pocket. It's not over. <laughs> all right? Um, and then the game came down to a Ravens defensive stand at the end to preserve the 23 game winning streak, just like it did versus the Cardinals. 
and they did it. They did it, man. Uh, it got to the point where the Ravens were so thin that Riley Webb had to play safety. Okay. And that uh, and Riley Webb is obviously a undrafted wide receiver. And um, he played deep safety for a couple plays, and he did all right. Okay. Um, our Darius watching it once again on the coverage for the, uh, that fourth down. Ravens with 23 in a row. Go into the regular season undefeated um, in the preseason once again. Now, they had some tough, tough decisions to make when it comes down to this roster. Do you carry six wide receivers? Uh, who gets cut out of the three safeties that I mentioned earlier? Um, but overall, just worrying about what happened last night in that game. The game was great. Um, I like what I saw. I think Anthony Brown has a lot of potential to be a a solid backup, maybe even a potential starter somewhere down the line in his career. Uh, I like what I saw from him. I like what I saw from Demarcus Robinson. So good game overall for the Ravens. And uh, let me know what let me know your standout performers in the comments. All right, it's your boy Gabe with another fan TV. I'm out.